The breezes herald the arrival of autumn. A clear mountain stream meanders across the land, flowing and burbling in a graceful arc around the human dwellings. The colors of autumn prove more fascinating than those of springtime. In the midst of varying hues of red, the mountain stands like a proud monument. The red color permeating through the dense woods offers an apt backdrop for all the creatures striving freely under heaven. This is a prime example of Chinese landscape art created by Li Keran. In 1963, after visiting many scenic spots around China, the artist chose to use the vermilion pigment for his masterpiece which portrays the towering aspirations of his motherland. These majestic mountains and forests opened a new chapter in the use of color in Chinese fine art. In traditional landscapes, the natural world used to be imbued with either a sense of ease and clarity or marked by imposing grandeur and gravity. This painting, however, has used meticulously layered ink wash to model the volume of the mountains. Then, the application of shifting textures sculpts the autumnal forest like a bar relief. The thin and fragile xuan paper seems to have acquired an enduring permanence. This piece of art in Chinese landscape painting is a new beginning. The important reason for the beginning is that the red sea can be painted red. To the point, I think the artist should open his eyes to see what he can see in the world. 画你用眼睛看到的东西，这非常有革命性。The splendid red color used by Li Keran in that poetic, passionate era has etched itself in the mind of spectators. The remarkable idea was first conceived in 1963, when Li Keran visited a large forest spanning the Tropic of Cancer in southern China. As a revered professor at the Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing, he had gained the recognition of old masters like Xu Beihong and Xi Bai Shi. It's the tenth year that he had been marking such artistic tours to sketch and draw the natural sceneries. His favorite seals bear his model. That spirit and soul are the essence of fine art. Drawing directly from the natural world was Li Keran's bold endeavor to renew the Chinese painting. Over many years, he had explored for a new spirit and soul 
to underpin China's art tradition in the new era. In the 1950s, the traditional fine art of China was on a cusp, as as many practitioners were trying to adapt and improve the time-honored techniques. Li Keqiang embraced the challenge by embarking on an extended journey. He believed that painting from life was the gateway to the transformation of Chinese fine art. The artist must go into the natural world and merge their character with that of the era. For more than a decade, Li Keqiang made dozens of trips to sketch and paint from life. The longest lasting some eight months. He traveled tens of thousands of miles. The mountains and streams inspired Li Keqiang's brushstroke, and revealed to him the limitations of traditional techniques. I told him he said he needs a direct communication. If we use today's language to say, it is a cross-cutting of all fields of science. During this transitional period, Li Keqiang's works presented a distinct combination of the styles of old masters like Qi Baishi and Huang Binghong, and the pointillism and other modern approaches learned during his days at the Art Academy in Hangzhou. The merged syntax of Chinese and Western fine arts offered a new path for Li Keqiang. In his efforts to blaze a new trail for China's landscape painting. From this perspective, Li Keqiang Master is the first Chinese master to be combined in the Chinese art form. His unfettered brushstrokes are bold and adventurous, departing from the established conventions of composition. By bringing the East and West together, he succeeded in capturing the natural world's spiritual essence faithfully. His landscape works were a manifestation of the inspiring times he lived in. In 1963, beholding the exuberant large forest in southern China's Guangdong. Li Keqiang began to contemplate a transformative endeavor after a decade of traveling and painting. The red foliage reminded him of Chairman Mao's poetry, celebrating the ten thousand mountains bathed in red, a symbol of a burgeoning nation. He wondered how exactly he could render these massive mountain peaks and glorious colors. 六十年代，我们看到的两弹一星，我们看到的农业上的一些事情，科技上的一些突破，都能显示出来呢。就在和平时期呢，一种文化上的酿酝着一种成熟。By a happy coincidence, Li Keqiang came into possession of some vermilion pigment made in the 18th century. With this, he launched a series of experiments rooted in tradition. In ink wash painting, the layered building of the colors and hues is known as ink accumulation. To this, Li Keqiang added such oil painting techniques as chiaroscuro, texturing, and light and shadow, which he learned in his student days. The blending of ink accumulation with oil techniques formed the foundation for the liberal application of the vermilion pigment. The only challenge was to imbue the autumn's light, color, and spirit with the aspirations of the poetic times. 那么朱砂现在这个所有的中国画家都会有这个颜料，呃，但是很多人还是画不出像万山红变这样的一种红。呃，那很显然，这不是一个红颜色的问题。那也就是说，这个红颜色你是涂到画面上，是染到画面上，还是用积墨的方法积彩积到画面上，把墨转化成朱砂，一层一层点上去，这才是关键。李可染 once wrote, 
I follow no tradition formulas, but I am faithful in tradition. Emerging from a combination of the old and new, the Li Keqiang style in Chinese landscape was born. He is trying to make a mountain like a mountain like a mountain. 特别的强调了，啊、呃，这个主峰在画面正中间迎面而来，这是所有的山水画中都回避的。这个形式感就是时代性啊，这种语言本身带有这个时代的气息。《万山红殿》的这件作品啊，呃，之所以能够成功，呃，并不仅仅是它用了红颜色，不仅仅这幅画具有形式美感，还重要的是它的。表达的一种精神境界的一种行为，一种博大，啊，是这种行为博大，让我们感受到这幅画面好像是万山红片从阴浸染。Trying his best to enter into the tradition before breaking out of it to embrace the future, Li Keqiang devoted his lifetime. He once remarked. As others lament how bleak a future the Chinese tradition has, I see nothing but the arrival of a new dawn in the Oriental art. In ten thousand mountains bathed in red, the imagery is brimming with poetry and passionate love. The light of national rejuvenation. Is bound to shine over the nation's mountains and rivers. <laughs>